Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make use of the Apache Cordova whitelisting plugin uh, due to certain things that were changed in the latest version of Apache Cordova for Android and Apache Cordova for iOS, uh, which prevents uh, a lot of external resources. Uh, for example, uh, if you're using Ionic Framework and you're trying to access some uh, web API in the latest version of Apache Cordova, uh, it, all web APIs will automatically be blacklisted. So by making use of this plugin, it allows you to access these uh, what previously available APIs. And, and we'll get more into it as I go through this tutorial. So to start things off, uh, let's go ahead and create a fresh Ionic Framework project right on your desktop. So let's say All right, with uh, your new Ionic Framework project created on your desktop, uh, let's go ahead and add the Android and iOS platforms. So Ionic platform add Android. Oh, so it aired out because I wasn't inside of the directory. So CD Ionic, and now let's try it again. All right, perfect, didn't fail this time. So I'm gonna add uh, for only Android, but uh, this tutorial works with iOS as well. So if you're on a Mac, feel free to do it for iOS as well. The next thing that we want to do is, uh, before I even start adding the whitelist plugin, uh, we're gonna walk through the simple tutorial and, and show what kind of error you're looking at if you don't use this plugin. Uh, and to use this tutorial, we're going to actually make use of the tiny URL API because you don't need to register for it, so it's a good example. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and, and enter a long URL and have it get sh uh, shrunk down to a short URL. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and open up our project inside of our uh, text editor here. And we are going to open the www, and then the JS, and then app.js file. And we're going to add the following code. We're going to say uh, controller, and we're going to call it example controller. We're going to include the scope and HTTP. We're going to slap a semicolon on that. And we're going to include one, uh, one function here scope.shrink and we're gonna we're gonna pass in a long URL and this function is just gonna make an HTTP request so HTTP dot or not dot so method and the method is going to be get the URL is going to be HTTP tiny URL dot com slash API create.php and then we're going to pass in some parameters here uh, only one parameter actually we're going to pass in the URL which is going to reference long URL and then we're going to manage our success and error callbacks so there's the success and then we've got error And call that error. And for the error, we're going to say alert, and we're going to say error. Um, let's just say something isn't right. If you really want to find out the error, you can do console.log, error, and then error. But that's kind of beyond what we're looking for here. And then for the um, success what we want is alert and then we're going to say result because we're going to show the the tiny URL so that's really all there is to it to our uh, back-end code let's go ahead and take a look at the front-end UI that we're going to be using so open up the index.html file and then for the ion content we're going to say ng controller and we're going to use the example controller that we just created 
and we're going to create two form elements. We're going to create an input. We're going to give it an ng model name of long URL and placeholder text of long URL. We're also going to include a button and that's going to include an ng click. So it's going to be shrink, so it's going to call our shrink function, and we're going to pass in the long URL that we type into the input field. We're going to call that shrink, and close that off. So again, we're we're not focused on quality of our UR, of our UI. We're just we're just trying to serve a, a very specific purpose here. So with that done, let's go ahead and build our project uh, using our terminal. And then we're going to say Ionic Build Android. Should just take a second. I know the, the more recent versions of Ionic Framework use Gradle rather than Ant, so it can be a little slower at times. All right, with that done, let's go ahead and install it to our simulator. So ADP install R, platforms, Android build, output, APK, Android debug APK. And let's take a look at our simulator. So here it is, Ionic project. Again, nothing special here. So we're just gonna type in uh, google.com. I'm going to shrink it. Uh, so error, uh, something is not right. And if we really wanted to get down to the down to business here, we can say ADB uh, logcat. And if we sift through our logs, you'll see um, the URL is blocked because it's not in the whitelist. So uh, let's complete this tutorial here, and we're actually going to install the whitelist plugin. So we're going to say uh, the following here. Cordova plugin add Cordova plugin whitelist. Alright, so if you really wanted uh, to follow all the rules here, you can take it a step further, although this isn't absolutely necessary for all scenarios, but you can go ahead and add a content security policy. So we can say meta then HTTP, equiv, and then we're going to say content security policy, and then content equals default source, and then we're going to do a, an asterisk there, semicolon, style source, and we're going to say self in single quotes, and then space single quotes unsafe in line and then we're going to say um, semicolon we're going to say script source and we're going to say um, single quotes self and then we're going to say space single quotes unsafe in line again and that, and then finally, unsafe eval. And uh, let's go ahead and close this off. So this is all part of the official uh, whitelist plugin documentation. Uh, there are a few other things that you can add, uh, but if you add if you add this meta line, it should stop complaining at you. Um, again, for this tutorial, it probably isn't absolutely necessary, but it doesn't hurt to add it. So let's save it, and we're going to go ahead and build it again uh, in our terminal here for Android. <coughs> let's go ahead and install it back into our simulator. And run it. I'm going to type in that same URL again. And this time we got a tiny URL uh, instead of that error message. 
So you can see what kind of difference uh, it makes. And uh, if you've been keeping up with my tutorials, you, you know that I've made a Facebook example that uses the Facebook APIs. Uh, that too will need the uh, whitelist plugin now as of the latest Apache Cordova. Uh, it's just a, a way, a security measure to help improve security in your apps. Uh, it's, it sacrifices convenience, but uh, security is always better than convenience, especially when it comes to your end users.